Hey there, Tubies. It's Aisha. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. We're in a new space. We're in my new home. So there are no books behind me. Um, just the small rack right here. I'm very anxious about it. <laughs> but today we're actually doing a quick review of Shadow Blade by Teresa Glass. <clears throat> I don't actually have a physical copy of that book, but I'm going to put up a picture here. Cerisa Glass started the Shadow Chaser series, and I absolutely love this. I've marathoned three books and have begged Mama for <laughs> another book, and she said there's one coming out next month in November. I'm really, really excited about it. So for those that are looking for, if you are a fan of the L.A. Bank Banks um, Vampire Huntress series. This is a fantastic series to pick up because you know there's no more Ellie Banks. But this one is really, I absolutely love it. I've mentioned before that I actually went to school originally to become an archaeologist and anthropologist, and my favorite things to study, my two favorite things to study were Egypt and Native American studies as a person who absolutely loves reading Egyptian books and reading The Coming Forth by Dawn for fun <laughs> and try to learn hieroglyphics for fun, this series fed pieces of my soul I didn't know I needed. So the Shadow Blade series starts the, sh um, the Shadow Chaser series and it stars Kira Solomon, who is a young woman charged um, with the duties of the Shadow Chaser. And her job is to help keep the balance between light and darkness. And her job is to keep darkness from taking over the city of Atlanta. She is a fully trained Egyptologist who has the magical capabilities to touch something and be able to learn um, the full history of a thing. If she does that to a human, she drains the human of their life. So she has learned since she was a child, particularly once she hit puberty, not to touch other human beings which is very sad because humans do need touch and you can literally, we call it in the medical community, fail to thrive if you do not re, um, receive human touch. Um, Kira is raised by um, an adopted mother who took her in when she hit puberty and accidentally put her sister into a coma and um, because she touched her while she was sleeping. Um, and Kira ended up going to this community where she is raised and put through the rigorous training of becoming a shadow chaser. Um, it is told from Kira's point of view for a majority of the story and then later on in the story we're introduced to new characters. Can I tell you that I absolutely laughed once I figured out who Mr. Nancy was? Can I just, oh my god, I absolutely love the rendition of a Nancy in here. Um, it is not a spoiler because it is literally on the back of the book, but I don't read synopses, so I don't know these things going in. If you are a lover of Egyptian mythology, this is a great series. There includes West African um, mythology and folklore as well, as well as the history of Nubia and its connection to Egypt. Um, just amazing. This is not really a romance. This is really more of an urban fiction um, with a paranormal mystery slant. There is a case that Kira has to solve, and this goes towards her overall um, story. Uh, Kira is also trying to find out who she is because she is adopted, and she is aware that she's adopted, so this impacts her abilities to do what she wants to do and how she does it. And she's got a little bit going on um, where she has to learn to accept her talents. So I absolutely love the story. Kira has some really good, strong characters around her that make her a stronger person. She has to learn her abilities and, of course, solve the case. Um, she loses people in this story and that enhances who she is and I um, absolutely love it. Um, I give the writing and the world building five stars. I ended up giving the overall story a four and a half. I've mentioned before that five stars for me means that I'm breaking down crying or feeling all the emotions and while I absolutely loved this story I was not breaking down crying or feeling you know, a lot of emotions. I was super excited to read the story. I dived right into the next two after reading the first one. I finished the story in a day and a half. I absolutely loved it. It was such an engaging story that I did not want to put it down. Um, I definitely highly recommend if you are a lover of 
mythology or lore or want to see strong black characters or want to see strong female characters. This story, once again, does not pivot on a romance, even though um, the beginnings of one or two are listed in the story. Um, but the strongest part of the story is Kira's building of a team and creating her team and Kira's um, ability to create and solve the mysteries that she needs to. Um, absolutely loved it. Uh, the fact that she is a devotee of the goddess Mahat makes me love her. Um, the discussion of the coming forth by Don, otherwise known as the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Um, the discussion of history of Nubia and the military might, the Medjai, just absolutely amazing. World building is done in a fantastic way that does not dump all the info on you, but gives you a, a peek into the lives. And it feels like when you get into the story as if the story had been going on for a while, not like you're missing things, but like you're sliding into the story and understanding what's going on. I absolutely enjoyed it. I highly recommend it. If you're a lover of urban fiction and love um, strong characters who are hunters or fighters, then this is definitely a story for you. She's not necessarily hunting vampires because even though they exist in this world, that's not what her job is. Um, and even though she's... Another really major thing about the story and the reason I love the series is even though it's a story of the fight between light and dark, it does not pivot on the Judeo-Christian um, concepts of right and wrong. It is heavily reliant on West African folklore and Egyptian folklore and concepts of good and bad and what makes a person um, go to heaven, or which is among the, the gods, or are devoured and destroyed. So the when you die, you're not going to heaven to see angels and a god. In here, you your heart is weighed against Mahat's feather, and you... Um, are either glorified enough to make it through or you're devoured. And I absolutely love that. So as I said, really good for those of us that love history and Egyptology and Egypt and Nubia and West Africa and our lore. This is a story definitely for you. It is not heavy. It is not preachy. The story moves quickly and I enjoyed myself reading it. So I highly recommend um, I will be doing a review on the other two books as well as doing an overall review of the three books that are out right now. And I will see you guys in the next one. If you read this and if you want to have a better discussion, you can leave it down in the comments down below or you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. They're all listed in the um, section. I will also list my blog review where I go into a little more detail. Um, and if you have any questions, we can talk about it in the comments. Let me know if you read this or if you're going to read this and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.